What's going on everyone? In today's video, we're going to talk about mixing and exporting our track in Studio One Five. All right, so remember last video, we mixed our song, we added some effects, we added some compression, reverb, EQ, and delay. So now I wanna talk about song format. So part of what makes a song interesting is adding different sections to your song. You don't wanna just have the same loop going on and on for three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. You kinda of wanna create different sections. And a lot of times I like to take things out to make things more interesting. And then, boom, add it all back in for a nice big chorus, all right? So here we have our loop. We have drums, synth bass, piano, synth pad, and a synth lead. So in order to create whole sections of songs, I like to take the whole loop, which usually be four or eight bars, and I'll extend that whole loop out to maybe 64 bars uh, or 72 or, you know, whatever length of the song that I want. All right. So let's just start with that. We're going to select our arrow tool at the top. Okay. And then we're going to highlight. We're gonna hold option, no, oh, hold on. Here we gotta highlight that. We're gonna hit option, then we're gonna select at the bottom of the region. Okay. Then we're gonna drag that out. Then we're just gonna do that all over again. We're gonna highlight everything. Select it, drag it out, okay. Highlight everything. Select it. Drag it out. All right. So I think for the sake of this, we'll just do 32 bars. We don't have to get crazy with it. All right. So from there, I like to subtract. Uh, I'm a very, I think, very subtractive when it comes to music. A lot of times with EQ, I think subtractive. A lot of times I think of compression as a, as a subtraction because you're attenuating. And I like to think of arranging as subtraction, all right? So, you know, you start with a full sounding song, then you just subtract and subtract and subtract. I wanna go ahead and turn this loop off, so I'm gonna hit the backslash. All right, so we'll go into this first section I feel like I want to start without drums. So I'm just highlighting these drums. And I want to start without bass. Let's hear what this sounds like. So maybe I want to do that for another four bars so the first eight bars will be without bass and drums and maybe i'll put the piano in on that fifth bar let's hear it So far, so good. Okay, so I like that so far. Uh, I think we're at about 16 bars. Okay, so we've got sort of like an eight bar intro and we've got, um, what is this about? Uh, eight more bars of like a chorus sound, which I believe would start here. So that's nine. All right, 
So here I want to take this piano track out. All right. And I want to make sort of like a verse section. Okay. Maybe we'll do like an eight bar, eight bar verse. So I'm just going to leave it with drums and synth bass for this verse section. Then we'll bring it back in with a big chorus. And, you know, we'll extend this out eight more bars. All right. So. I move kind of fast here, but I'll explain everything that I did. All right. So I created an eight bar intro, right? From sections one to eight, uh, one to eight, or that marker says nine, but that's where the next section will start. So I'll measure nine. Then we have a chorus section with everything in it. Then from measure 17 to 25, we have a verse section with just drums and a bass and synth pad. Then we have a full chorus section for 16 bars. So let's listen through and hear how it sounds. A lot of times when I'm doing my own productions, I'll, I'll go through and I'll sort of just blindly make these changes and make sections. And then if I hear certain dropouts or if I hear certain things that I want to add back in, then, you know, I'll go in and do it by hand. But, um, yeah, I like to sort of just do things kind of fast and then go listen to it and see what I think. So let's hit play. All right, so you know what I'm thinking would be really cool for these last eight bars if I was to just take the drums out. So serve as a nice little outro. Okay. All right, so what I want to do now, this is maybe sort of a sort of advanced thing, um, but I do want to talk about it a little bit. This is just something that happens in the mastering stage. I want to open up Ozone 8, which is available for rent to own on Splice. So I highly recommend everybody gets Ozone 8 so you can master your own music. I'm going to open up Ozone 8. And I just want to use this maximizer, which is a brick wall limiter. And I just want to set that to minus 0.5 and just see where it's hitting. All right, so 
um, I'll explain it a little more after, but basically what I'm seeing now is that our snare might be a little loud because our snare is, our, our whole entire song is peaking every time the snare hits. Okay, so usually I wouldn't mix in headphones, but sometimes you miss things like that when you do mix in headphones, which is why, you know, I, I think monitors are better for getting a gauge of how loud certain things are. And the, the, I think headphones are good for the stereo image, but they're not always good for getting a gauge of how dry or wet certain sounds need to be um, and how direct and and close to, to your ear certain sounds are. So in my headphone, that snare doesn't sound loud, but as I can see, it's, it's peaking quite a bit. So I'm just going to turn the snare down a little bit. Nothing wrong with a quiet snare. So, so I'll explain what a brick wall limiter is. So a brick wall limiter, you can almost sort of think of like the, uh, <laughs> he's like the bouncer outside of a club. All right. Um, the brick wall limiter is not going to let anything get past a certain, a certain level. All right. So you see over here, it's a ceiling. I set my ceiling to negative 0.5. So basically this means any sound that's going to peak above that. So above that would be negative 0.4 or 0.3 or maybe hitting zero or maybe something that's clipping at plus 0.5 or plus two. Um, it's going to bring that down to 0.5 and it's going to do it really fast and in a really transparent way. Or you can set it in a way that's not transparent. Transparent meaning that it's happening, but you can't really hear it. All right, a lot of a lot of funny words that we use in in music, um, music production, but but yeah. So uh, the purpose of this is that when a song clips, first of all, it's something that you you can't go back and and change. Clipping is is one of those ugly mistakes that sort of can't be undone, and it sounds really bad. So now that our track is not clipping, I think it's time to export this, bounce it out. Okay, so let's go to file. First of all, let's save. <laughs> Very important. Always want to save. And you always want to back it up on another hard drive. All right, so you got your session on a hard drive, then you back it up on another hard drive. So now it's time to export our song. OK, so what I want to do is I want to take this this uh, marker here that we use to loop all right, and I want to drag this out. Maybe to a little bit beyond, uh, not that far, Hold on. maybe to a little bit beyond where the song ends, because if you remember, we have delay on the piano, right? When the song ends, I want to I want to keep that delay there. So the reason why I want to take that and drag it out is that I want to bounce this whole entire song, right? So I took that mark and I dragged it from measure one to about measure 43, okay? So what we want to do is we want to go to song and go to export mix down. So this is the screen where we can select all of our options for our mix down. Um, so obviously we don't want to call it mix down. I call this LP beat. So let's stick with that LP beat. A lot of times I like to label things by date. So a lot of times I'll go LP beat eight, 17 bounce. So here in the format, we have it bouncing as a 16 bit uh, 48 kilohertz wave file, but we have other options here. Um, uh, AIFF, FLAC, MP3, M4A, um, everything. But I think I want to keep it. I want to keep it as a wave. So when you're when you're bouncing out songs to be released, this is pretty much the standard, although I would say most of the time it would be 16, 
44 if you wanted to upload a song to let's say cd baby uh, they're going to look for 1644 that's sort of the standard um but you know there are other options you know a lot of times if you're if you're bouncing things in a higher sample rate after they're recorded you really won't hear a difference but you can also set up your session to record in higher rates like 96 and you know to my ears some people say they there's not much of a difference recording in a higher sample rate to my ears 96 is a, a great sounding sample rate you get a lot of great separation in the mix um, but i think you know 44 is a good place to start 48 obviously um as well so i think we're going to keep that the same keep that away file and um so now we over here we can select the export range so as you can see this is the reason why i drag this uh loop marker out to where i did so we can keep that to uh, have it bounce between the loop all right uh, this will show us how long the song will be um, this will uh, bounce to the main output all right so on our interface um, it's bouncing everything on outputs sometimes it'll be listed as one and two on your interface or you'll see main output on the back of your interface basically that just means everything that that's sent to that main output where all your instrument tracks are going all your buses are going so here we have a few options bypass master effects which we don't want to do we want to keep ozone on there to catch those peaks here we can write the tempo to the audio file which is a cool feature which means no matter where i take this file let's say i take this file and i put it um, in another studio one five session it'll automatically say hey this is 85 beats per minute um import to track close after export and overlap all right so i'm going to keep this how it is and uh sorry one more thing this is also very important because at one point you know in my, in my beginning production days i would bounce things out and not really know where they went so let's just make sure we know where our bounces are going all right so let's just for the sake of things bounce it to downloads okay and there we go we did the whole thing from dragging and dropping samples to actually making a beat from scratch with drums bass uh chord progressions a uh, melody to mixing it and finally bouncing it out if you like this video please subscribe because we'll be going more in depth on some of these techniques like uh creating more complicated chord progressions or you know going into the nitty gritty mixing techniques thanks again for watching and i'll see you later